Hello everyone, I'm Santiago Santiago, and today I'm going to be testing Spider-Man Miles Morales on the Steam Deck, so let's get right into it. This is on SteamOS, no Windows installed on this machine, and I'm going to show you off the settings. <laughs> Finally enough, the options menu, the options menu, the main menu is pretty demanding, because heavy depth of field, I guess, let me hide the performance overlay. So we're doing... 1200 by 800, 1280 by 800, which is the native resolution, B-Sync on, I'll explain why in a minute. Then, upscale method, IGTI, which is Insomnia Games temporal, temporal, <laughs> temporal reconstruction or something. So, temporal injection. So this is like FSR or DLSS, but this is the one they use in the consoles, made by the developer in ultra quality, which is the closest to the native resolution, no dynamic resolution, and that's basically it. Looks pretty good on the Steam Deck itself. On the settings, medium textures, four times anisotropic, that's the setting used on the consoles, which on the tiny screen, you really don't notice much of a difference. So yeah, it will be one or two frames more. In this case, it does make a difference. We are limited by the hardware. Low shadows, they still look good. SSAO, we also have screen space reflections that we can turn on then no ray tracing medium level of detail medium traffic medium crowds medium hair which this can be pushed to low actually weather particle quality on medium low depth of field bloom lens flares and the other things i put a slight motion blur there because i think it looks good at 30 frames and a little bit of sharpness and that's basically the settings so let's get right into the game and I'm going to enable the performance overlay at the highest level. And I recommend playing this at 30 frames per second. Why is that? Because if you unlock the frame rate, it's going to be CPU limited and it's going to stutter pretty bad. So right now I enable allow tearing, which before this setting existed, you were always with VSync on no matter what. And well, if you allow tearing, there will be screen tearing, so I enabled VSync inside the game, and the latency is so much better, it's ridiculous. So allow tearing on, frame rate limit at 30, VSync on. And we're on ultra quality IGTI, Insomnia Games Temporal Injection. And as you'll see, around Miles, there is quite a bit of buzziness going on. This is because of the lower resolution and the reconstruction technique. But it stutters way less than using FSR2, and it also uses, uh, has less artifacts. For some reason, FSR2 on this game, at least on the Steam Deck, there is way more uh, artifacts around the character for some reason while flying around. That's why I recommend the one made by the developers. It looks pretty good. Then the Intel solution is not so great either, so I recommend this one. So let's do something demanding. In this case, we'll be doing the crime called Street Shootout. This one has tons of effects, and this is the biggest difference between the, um, the original game and this one. This one has lots more of effects going on, which looks good, but is more GPU demanding. They released a patch recently that addresses effect heavy areas, so it should be easier to handle it. So yeah, there is fire, there is smoke going on, lots of particles be because of the shooting. And I also have some electrical powers, so this would be the worst case scenario for me, at least so far. So sometimes you can drop into the upper 20s. There's a lot happening, as you can see. <laughs> so yeah, let me use some effects. I know we basically between 27 and 30 frames most of the time. Again, remember, this is like worst case scenario. And if you don't like those tiny drops into the upper 20s from time to time, you can use quality instead of ultra quality for the resolution. But again, if you unlock the frame rate, you're going to get drops in performance because we are CPU limited. Keep that in mind. Oh, yeah. But we're using the GPU from 80 to 90 something percent. So we're taking full advantage of the GPU. And the frame time is pretty good. 
Although the first time you launch the game due to shader compilation, sometimes when flying around, you're going to get uh, drops in performance, some stutters. Those clear out in a few minutes. At least in this game, I saw way worse cases of shader compilation. I think that's why it's playable. Mark is playable in the Steam Deck. So yeah. Oh Jesus, I'm going to die. I'm not paying attention. There we go. Whoop. I'm screwed. No, I'm not. <laughs> oh yeah, pretty good. I finished the entire game like this. I got all the achievements. So I can tell you the game plays excellently. And it also, when it um, puts the save files on the Steam Cloud, you can continue where you left off on your computer. That was a big effect, but we're, we're not in control. So it's all good. So as you can see, most of the time 30. And why didn't I enable dynamic resolution? Well, I think it's a little bit too aggressive. The resolution gets way too low. And that's an issue, at least in my books. And very rarely you drop into the upper 20s, especially when trees are close by, plus all this happening in the background. Which is not all the time. And with the FPS counter off, it was still pretty good. But yeah, unfortunately, even with the lowest settings, you're not getting over 30 consistently. It's going to be a stutter fest <laughs> if you go above 30. That's why I lock it. And before continuing, because as you could see there, we got some drops. If you want to smooth that out, go back here into upscaling. And instead of ultra quality, go for quality. Still lowers the resolution a little bit further, but it should clean up all those minor drops. If you are sensitive to that, I recommend restarting the game after doing this, but still, let's continue and see if we have any problems in the meantime. But again, on the Steam Deck screen, you're not really going to notice a huge change. When you're flying around, well, that's going to be more noticeable because of the difference from the background to miles moving around. You're going to see the blurriness, which on ultra quality is way less noticeable. As you can see now, instead of being always at the 90% GPU usage range, we are dropping into the 80s pretty often. So some extra room to spare, which is good. But the game is more stable. So let's do another quick <laughs> uh, street thing. Because those are the most demanding so far. Let's do another one. But going below this settings that I'm using, I think it's not worth it. I'll just keep it like this, medium-ish settings. The resolution on ultra quality with IGTI. And you should be good to go. If you don't mind some minor drops, put it on quality, on, sorry, on ultra quality, and if you want more stable gameplay, well, you know, put it on quality like I'm doing right now. Although, personally, again, I don't mind those minor drops every once in a while, because, again, lots of effects on screen. I feel like a little bit sharper image, that's the way. But you gotta make a small sacrifice on the, on the resolution. If you want to get more consistent 30s. I think most people will probably use quality instead of ultra quality. Because again, on the tiny screen, you're probably not going to notice. I'm just an annoying person in that regard. <laughs> but I can play just fine. Let's do more effects. Let's get crazy. See, I do lots of effects, still on the 30s. Pretty good. Beautiful. Also, to remember, I'm using 4GB um, of VRAM allocated to the GPU instead of 1GB, which is the stock setting. You can see that in the description. But it's pretty easy to do. Anybody could do it from the BIOS on the Steam Deck. And it made the gameplay way more stable, especially when swinging around. 
you're done. Reduce two atoms. So yeah, pretty impressed with how it runs on the Steam Deck, considering how aggressive it is with the effects. For 30 FPS is great. Anything over 30 is going to stutter. G CPU limitation, unfortunately. Let's see, this is pretty impressive that we can play this <laughs> portably. It kind of blows my mind. Just in case though, let me unlock the frame rate. Just for... Just for reasons. So I'm going to V-Sync. I disable it. Perfect. Then I go here. I disable the FPS limit. And I'm going to put the upscale quality on performance to get less work on the GPU. No ambient occlusion, no reflections, low level of detail, traffic on low, low, everything on low. That should do. And let's see how it goes. Well, I think I have to restart the game now. One second. Settings, performance, upscaling, so it's a pretty low resolution. And uh, yeah, let's see how smooth or not smooth it is. And as you can see, there is drops. <laughs> it's not consistent, unfortunately. And it looks way blurrier, and we still drop below 40. So this is why I recommend a 30 FPS lock, because just look at this. <laughs> Yeah, unstable is an understatement. Look at that frame time. Jesus Christ. Yeah, no. I don't think it's worth it. I don't know why it runs like this, though. Pretty strange. It's usually not this extreme. So yeah, again, my advice, do this. Lock it to 30. Whoa, and it clashed. <laughs> okay. Yeah, keep it locked to 30. It didn't crash on me before. This is the first time, actually, which is interesting. But my advice is just lock it to 30. Use the settings that I said, and you should be good to go. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time. Bye, guys. Thanks for watching.